What's going on, Bourbon Real Talk family? It is Wes and Randy, of course, and we are so glad you're here because these are five whiskeys that we would absolutely never, ever, ever buy. And you probably shouldn't either, okay? So let's get right into it. All right, Wes, I know what the viewers are thinking. Yes. They are thinking that we're about to trash some brands. That's not our style. That's not really how we roll here no. on Bourbon Real Talk because, you know, those people that are out there, they're pouring their blood, sweat, and tears into building that brand. Yes. And even if it's not what I want to drink today, it might be tomorrow. And so I don't want to give any negative press to any particular brand. I get that. Okay, so let's 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 keep this list to categories so that our viewers will be educated and then they can make their own decision about what they should and shouldn't buy. And that, and that brings up a good point. We should clarify our typical disclaimer for all of you trolls that might be watching. You might yeah. as well just stop watching. Yeah, don't but in watch case you want to continue watching, keep in mind that these are just five whiskeys that we do not like. We don't like. And you may like them. And that is totally fine. We encourage anybody and everybody to try whiskeys and find the whiskeys that you love and drink them proudly. These are just five that we don't particularly prefer and we would never buy. And I'm going to tell you why I don't buy them. Yeah, me okay. too. All right. So the first one on the list is Spirit Whiskey. Well, let me also say that we don't have any of these bottles here to show you because, again, we do not buy them. We don't buy them. <laughs> so, so how are we going to show uh, you the bottle? We can't. We're we not going to line them up here and show you the whiskeys that we would never buy showing that we actually did buy them. No. Spirit whiskey is this weird category that only contains five to 20% whiskey. Okay, yes. All right? And so basically post prohibition, mm -hmm. whiskey inventories are super low because they have been tapping all of the whiskey that was in aging warehouses for medicinal whiskey for years. And at some point the government's like, oh crap, we're gonna run out of whiskey. And these people that have their, you know, their prescription, they're going to want to get it filled. Yep. So they allowed some of the distilleries to fire back up and start making some whiskey. But when prohibition ended, there was certainly not enough whiskey and in inventory to satisfy the public's demand. Mm -hmm. And so they started, you know, doing a lot of blended whiskeys and spirit whiskeys became popular. And basically you take between five and 20%. So you can't do it with less than five. Yeah. Right. But I mean, just 5% whiskey, come on. Mm. So it's 5% <laughs> of a whiskey from a category and the rest can be grain neutral spirit yes. um, or just neutral spirit. I don't, I don't think it has to be grain. Uh, so neutral spirit, which is effectively what vodka is before they add the water. Yeah. So a grain neutral spirit is what you get whenever you push distilling technology to its absolute limit. Yeah. You've distillation, is purification and you're separating things by boiling point mm. and all of the compounds that boil at the exact same temperature as ethanol will end up in the finished product which means that you can only get a spirit up to about uh, 90 92 and a half percent mm -hmm. pure um, and once you get to 90 percent purity that is consider considered a neutral spirit it's got you can't tell what it was made from it's flavorless it's odorless and mm. that is what vodka is made out of and that is also why there's no such thing there's no such thing there's no, no such, such thing, thing as a premium vodka they are all molecularly identical the only difference is the water that they use to cut it and unless they melted water out of the first meteor that came to earth that had ice in it, don't tell me to pay extra for the water. I'm not doing it, so. <laughs> Struck a chord with that. Struck Premium a chord. Vodka, bull crap. Get so, out of here with that. So, so spirit whiskey is very close to a vodka, yeah. basically. And I'm so- not, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. And uh, there's there's not a lot of big companies that do it, but there's there's a few, and there's one in, in Texas that got their brand pretty big by selling spirit whiskey. Uh, great news is it's very profitable mm -hmm. because it takes no time at all to make it and you don't need very much of an exper ex expensive product. Yep. And you can make it taste the way that you want it to taste because you're just adding things into it. Right. Um, and so for that reason, I'm uh, I'm out on that. You're out on that? Me too. I'm only here for the 100% whiskey. Not 92, not two, not five. 100% whiskey is what I'm into. And speaking of adding things to mm -hmm. whiskey, one thing that I 
can't get into, and I would never buy this type of whiskey, and that would be flavored whiskey. Okay. Flavored whiskey. If you are making your whiskey and you're adding flavoring to it, whether you're adding maple syrup or you're adding caramel or you're adding name that flavor, um, I'm out on that. Okay. What about you? I mean, there are some exceptions, but I'd say generally speaking, I don't buy flavored whiskey. Um, the the only major exception that I have a bunch of is is good times. Good times, yeah. And and good times claims that it's not flavored, that it's it's aging, mm -hmm. uh, that they do barrel aging. Um, the problem is, is that they have some flavors that that, that that you don't age those things in barrels, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's like. You got a barrel that aged apricots? Yeah, like, I was gonna say, apricot cool. barrels? Apricot barrels. Nice. But no, in terms of like fireball and things like that, mm. um, there's, you know what's interesting? Did you know that if you change your coolant in your car and you leave it out, that like dogs will drink it? Did uh, you know that? No, that's so a random fact. I yeah, yeah, so it's, it, you know, it used to be more common for people to work on their own cars at the house. And when I was a kid growing up, my grandfather was a mechanic and I remember him telling me when I was a kid, you have to be real careful with coolant because animals will drink it. Mm. And they'll drink it because there's a chemical in it that it, it makes it taste sweet. And so they think that they're they're drinking something that's very sweet, but mm -hmm. it's actually poisoning them. Yeah. And a lot of those flavored whiskeys that are very sweet are flavored with the same chemical that makes coolant mm. taste sweet. Wow. And so, um, and, and fireball is one of them. So, um, <laughs> if you, if you've ever done fireball shots out with your friends and then woke up the next morning and felt like death warmed over, that's probably why yeah. it's got a lot of chemicals in it. It's not an organic product. So we, we yeah. should probably avoid that. I don't buy it. Hey Wes. Hey man, I'm here. What are you doing? I'm here for the bottle. Sure. Oh, uh, wow. Well, so you just carried all this? Well, I put them in my seat and I uh, kind of put the seatbelt over them and things just to keep them from. But this one did fall on the ground. I hope it's okay. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I'm you good. Lose you know, that. I just couldn't. Dis I can't decide really what I wanted to bring. So. Well, I, all. I recommend that you get one of these. Oh, a Mary Poppins bag? Yes. It's very similar to what Mary Poppins would carry, except for it holds whiskey. Ooh. Okay. Tell me more. All right. So Bourbon Real Talk has had this custom designed for whiskey lovers. Nothing like this has ever existed before. Ever. It's been designed to hold nice. all bottles. Okay. Every, so like size, even a huh? wide bottle like this one, look at it. It fits right in there. Ooh. Super tall bottles like E.H. Taylor. No problem. What about the Fits Leaper right fork? in there. Right Leaper's there. fork. Oh, Look at wow. this, even the weird shaped like Scotch-like bottles. Hey, like this is a weird, 12. I bet this one doesn't fit. Nope, that one's gonna fit just fine, I promise. Oh, wow, okay, and then we've got, so how many can you fit in here? I mean, You can fit six in here. Ooh. If this is something that you need because you carry bottles places, Head on over to bourbonrealtalk.com and pick one of these bad boys yeah. up. If you want to look really cool at your next tasting that you show up to a bottle share, walk in with one of these Mary Poppins bourbon bags <laughs> and just keep the bottles coming out of them. Keep just, them coming. And, and uh, truth be told, I've carried up to 10 bottles in this bag. All right. Because there's separation in between the padding, so you can fit two in the center, two on the sides, boom, yeah. 10 bottles. Boom. That's everything you need. Okay? Everything you need. That's what we're here for, to keep you hooked up with all the cool bourbon lover Chachkis. Chachkis. And also check out the other great things that are on bourbonrealtalk.com. Yeah, do it. I'll see y'all later. Let's let's talk about American blended whiskey. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is a category that I don't buy um, for the same reason that I don't buy spirit whiskey. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting about mash bill whiskeys, right? So you're talking about bourbon, rye, single malt. In the United States, they have to be completely unadulterated, right? And they're 100% organic. They're, um, they're, they're free of all types of things that people have allergies to. Mm -hmm. They don't have any gluten in them. They don't have uh, any fat. They don't have any sugar. Did you know whiskey doesn't have any sugar in it? It has no sugar. It's completely keto. Right? Sugar free. Sugar free. A lot of people go, oh, well, vodka, you know, you drink vodka when you're on a. No, no, drink whiskey. Yes. Vodka, you're going to mix with something that either has chemicals in it that make it taste sweet or 
you mix something that actually has calories in it, yeah. right? Whiskey, you can drink on its own. It tastes delicious. Yes. And it, it doesn't have any compounds in it that you can metabolize. American blended whiskey loses all of that, mm. right? Because it, it can, it's going to be between 20 and 50% whiskey, but no more than 50% typically. Mm -hmm. And, and, it's got other things in it. It can have grain neutral spirits. It can have flavorings. It can have artificial flavors. It can have all kinds of stuff in it. And since we live in America, where we have all of these beautiful spirits, from right. it's like why? Yeah. Let's let's stick with the real organic, we are natural the, uh, stuff. We are the home of bourbon. Mm -hmm. like, you can only make bourbon in the United States. Only here. And so why mess that up by blending in other? chemicals and other flavorings to it i don't get it uh, but another blended that i'm not a fan of is just cross the border and that's mm -hmm. canadian blended whiskey canadian blended now i did get my hand slapped by my good friend alex yes uh metaphorically we were not in the same room um but he he did uh he, he did give me a a, a, a tongue lashing a little bit I, really? I, I, yeah it was bad like oh. i yeah, well, I deserved it. I was okay. wrong. <laughs> yeah. So I, I made a public comment about Canadian um, blended whiskeys having GNS in it. And it actually turns out that Canadian blended whiskeys uh, can't have anything in it that didn't age in a barrel. Okay, so, so no right. grain neutral spirits, which is part of the history of why the Seagram's distillery had purchased the um, MGP plant mm. because they needed production of whiskeys that were aged in barrels. And they use a lot of light whiskey, which is a uh, perfectly fine product. Yeah. Okay. And they, they distill it to a higher proof than they do mash bill whiskeys. They age it in used barrels, which used barrels are a lot cheaper to come by in the United States mm -hmm. because we can only use them once. And then what do we do with them? we got to ship them overseas. But if you don't have the shipping cost, you can get those barrels for real cheap. And so, so that's interesting. But the reason why I don't buy Canadian blended whiskeys isn't because the component materials aren't quality or any of that. It's because my wife is gluten intolerant. Mm -hmm. And... I found out, and, and I don't know what the additive is, but like Crown Royal, the number one right. blended Canadian whiskey, has some additive in it that triggers a gluten response in my wife and in my buddy who actually has celiacs. Yeah. And so I don't keep those around the house just because I don't know who's going to come over and I'm like, yeah, drink anything you want. It's totally fine. And then they pick up a Canadian and drink it and have a gluten right. reaction. Yeah. I just don't want that to happen. No, and I'm in the same boat, not with the, the gluten, but with um, not saying that it's a horrible product. It's just if I go into a liquor store and they've got an aisle of bourbons, I'm not going to forsake any of those in lieu of a Crown Royal right. or some sort of foreign, uh, you know, foreign product that's uh, you know may have some additives in it that i'm just not a fan of so because since 1964 bourbon has been an official product of the united states of america yeah and many of those foreign producers who were not set back by production shutdown in world war one world war two and then the great mistake of the united states prohibition yes they took over market share used that money actually many of them bootlegged whiskey into the United States during Prohibition, filled their coffers, and then used that money to advertise against the United States whenever they tried to re-enter into the market. Right. And so it is a very American thing to support bourbon. Absolutely. Over and other products. Absolutely. Yeah. So are you an American or not? That's right. Now, our Canadian friends, we love you. We love uh, you. If you're watching, we support you drinking. Well, I think we've got one more whiskey that we are both mutually in agreement on mm -hmm. that we do not buy, and that is whiskey that has been price gouged. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I have overpaid for a couple whiskeys that I really wanted. Yep. Somewhere between retail and secondary. But some of these stores that I walk into, <clears throat> Liquor Depot, um, they have astronomical museum-like prices where mm -hmm. they don't really care if they ever sell that whiskey they just want to have a high price tag whiskey in their store and so you go in there and you look at a Weller 12 for example for 500 bucks and it's just like no I'm not going to buy that whiskey no so I will never buy a price gouged whiskey 
I will overpay retail on certain whiskeys that I really am looking for, but there is a fine line between you know, getting what you want at the price that you're willing to pay and just being price gouged. That, and the other thing is, is I think that we've proved recently with our crowdsourcing, with some blinds that we've done, yeah, that there's so much really high quality flavor whiskey that will produce an amazing drinking experience for you that's totally available on the shelf. Absolutely. And so you have to ask yourself, if you're contemplating buying an overpriced bottle, what is your purpose? Why are you buying it? Why are you buying it? Because if it's because you're looking for a premium drinking experience, you don't do that with price. Mm -hmm. You do that by getting a good bottle and drinking it with a good friend, which is what brings me to kind of our show philosophy. That is the show philosophy. That is the show in a nutshell. In a nutshell. And so if you've never watched Bourbon Royal Talk before, let me tell you about our show philosophy. We're all about bringing people together through bourbon. Mm -hmm. And that is something that's really important to me because I lost my brother to suicide in 2014. And in the aftermath of all of that, I was trying to find a way to make a difference in the world so that if there were other people that feel alone and unloved the way that he did, that they would not feel that way. They would know the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that you are loved and that you do matter and you have a future and this world needs you. And I started to notice as I grew in my bourbon passion that whiskey was bringing people together, even people that had different ideological views. And that's when I started to get more involved in the online whiskey community. And there was a dark side to that. I did see that. Mm -hmm. um, and but I ended up growing still in the hobby and I started to do live videos and eventually it turned into this, this podcast, because I realized if I could reach out to people, get people connected to whiskey, the whiskey will do the rest of the job and get them connected to others and people know they're not alone. But the dark side of all of that is that there are a lot of whiskey trolls out there. Yeah. And th their whole objective is to just wreck civil discourse, get attention for themselves um, try to make other people feel inferior so that they can feel big. And that actually caused me to realize a couple of things. One, I needed to start the Bourbon Real Talk community to create a space mm -hmm. where civil people could interact with each other. And the other thing that it taught me is that if that person can be hateful to you and even show hate towards you online and they don't really know you, it's just as easy for me to love you and show love towards you online, even though I really don't know you. And that's why I end every podcast with the same sign off, and that's this. Mm -hmm. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we, we love, love you. you. And we'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. All you seen, right. You seen Uncle Roger hung out with... Uh, oh... That's what it is. Yeah, that. Here, hit the mute button. Boom. Okay, that's what that noise in was. In your face, computer, trying to run He's shit. Trying to get in on our Always episodes. trying to get in there and be like, oh, I want to be the star. I'm like, look, I get it. You're an Apple product. Yeah, And Apple. you're just another computer. So you computer. sit there and you shut up. You sit there and shut up. If you aren't following me on TikTok, you should. You should. Uh, it's the period Westperado and um, I do these things called Texas driving tips and um, yes and a lot of people say I sound like a weatherman so check it out. <laughs> dude it's not even 12 and you're already drunk you uh, need to stop that. I'm not drunk <laughs> well you're seeing into a glen glass what does that mean a whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums they communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blantons, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary, <laughs> idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. 
So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today. Thank you.